Overnight, at least it was for us in Australia because we're from the future, Microsoft ran an event and they released their new Surface Pro 9, Laptop 5 and Studio 2 Plus. As you'd expect, the presentation came with incredible sound and slick visuals to create anticipation for the new products. Presentation opened with a voiceover by the famous comedian Trevor Noah, and if you listen to it with your headphones, you'd even hear a subtle booge in the first 10 seconds to stir you up and get you ready. 10 years ago, we created Surface to inspire creativity, connection, and human potential. Unfortunately, those three products were already well and truly leaked and publicized before the event, but as always, there are a few small details that made the event worthwhile. We'll leave a link to the event so that you can watch it below, but here's our summary. The new Surface Pro 9 builds on the form factor of the Surface Pro 8, but unifies the Surface Pro X and Pro 8 lines together into what we assume is the same chassis design. Previously, there were subtle differences between the Pro X and the Pro 8. Although they shared an interchangeable keyboard, the Pro X was slightly thinner than the Pro 8. The volume power buttons and ports were also in different places. We don't know for sure yet, but we're assuming that these will now be unified. So now there'll be two choices for the Surface Pro 9, the Intel 12th generation line or the ARM powered SQ3. It's good to see that Microsoft remain committed to Windows on ARM, and there are some exciting new features of the ARM based Surface Pro 9s to look forward to, but there's a good chance that the unified naming of the two lines will simply create confusion amongst consumers who may buy the ARM version without properly understanding its limitations and its benefits for that matter. If you had a Surface Pro 8, you wouldn't see much difference looking at the Surface Pro 9 apart from some new funky colors. The Intel processor version goes from the 11th generation to the 12th generation chip, and that will no doubt bring with it modest performance gains and battery life extension. Even though it's not a radical change, as expected this early in the life cycle of a new form factor, the Surface Pro 9 will continue to be the most versatile computing device on the market. It is a device that gets out of your way to let you do important work. Unlike a typical laptop or a tablet, this device combines the best keyboard and trackpad with a fantastic webcam, rear-facing camera, dual Farfield Studio microphone array, a 3x2 touchscreen, and a form factor that truly allows you to take advantage of the class-leading Surface Slim Pen 2 with its haptic pen texture. I personally won't be in a rush to upgrade my Pro 8 because the Surface Pro 9 Intel line doesn't include an LTE option. The Surface Pro 9 ARM line does include a 5G option, which is fantastic, but you'd need to deal with the limitations of an ARM device to make that work for you, and I'll get into the details of that debate and discussion in another video. Although I won't upgrade my Surface Pro 8, I will most likely upgrade my Surface Pro X to the Surface Pro 9 with the ARM-based SQ3 and 5G. And by the way, don't worry, Microsoft will continue to sell the Intel-based Surface Pro 8 with LTE, at least to commercial customers, so you don't need to worry about that important option going away. Now, it wasn't mentioned in the presentation, but I hope I can share this with you, that the Surface Pro 9 is designed to be more serviceable than ever. Many years ago, Microsoft claimed that they couldn't build a device like the Surface Pro with its ruggedness and rigidity without gluing all of the components together. Now, this made the device in the past practically unserviceable, and I believe that that was a really poor choice on their part. It seems that under Sachin Adela, with Microsoft's push to become carbon negative by 2030, they've put their best minds to work on addressing the many problems that new devices create for the environment. And they've figured out how to build these devices in a way that they can be serviced and maintained long into the future. Here on the channel, I get comments from people all of the time who are using service devices that are up to 10 years old. I'm sure that we'll hear even more news about the serviceability of the Surface Pro 9 soon, so make sure that you stay tuned. In addition to the Surface Pro 9, Microsoft also announced the Surface Laptop 5. Unlike the Surface Pro 9, which regular viewers know I'm very partial to, the Surface Laptop 5, like all other laptops, doesn't get out of your way. It just stays there right in front of you, and for that reason, I'm never too excited about a new laptop release. But I know that I don't represent the majority. Nowhere near it, I'm in a tiny portion of technology early adopters. I've been relying on a computing tablet form factor for now over 20 years, and 20 years ago, that was a very lonely place. Now we know from the law of diffusion of innovation that technology adoption usually takes about 40 years. So over the next 20 years, we'll see far more people adopt the two-in-one form factor that Microsoft has pioneered. If you're sticking with a laptop, this Surface Laptop 5 is not a bad option at all. Although it doesn't enable you to think with ink, it does a better job at being a multimodal device than most laptops do. There's a great keyboard and trackpad, Alcantara fabric options, there's the 3x2 display, which is much more suited to work than the typical 16x9 that you'd find on other laptops. There's also the dual Farfield Studio microphone array that allows you to type with your voice, to present in PowerPoint with assistive live captions or translations, 
and that will soon give you the best possible experience with the new transcripts feature in OneNote. The dual Farfield Studio Microphone Array allows you to work both close and far away from your device. Whether you're standing five meters away giving a PowerPoint presentation, or whether you're sitting 50 centimeters away on a Teams call, the microphones on the Surface Laptop 5 and the Surface Pro 9 will clearly capture your voice. They're perfectly designed for it. So although it doesn't enable the tablet form factor, the Surface Laptop 5 is the perfect place to go if you want to stay within your comfort zone. And lastly, Microsoft released an update to what is probably my favorite Surface, the Surface Studio. They're calling this one the 2 Plus. I'm not sure why they're not calling it a 3, but it's a major upgrade over the current Surface Studio 2. The Surface Studio 2 that's sitting on my home office desk has a seventh generation Intel processor that hasn't aged well with Windows 11. The Studio 2 Plus jumps all the way to the 11th generation Intel H-series processor that promises to be a massive upgrade. There's also a new NVIDIA RTX graphics card, and not one, but three Thunderbolt 4 USB-C ports, which will be a very welcome update. It'll ship with Windows 11 on board, and it will look very much like the previous model. This is a niche and expensive device, but it is truly magnificent, and I'm really excited to see this line continue. So those were the big product announcements, but there are also some accessories released. There was a slide clicker for Teams calls, and a very interesting USB-C speaker dock called the Microsoft Audio Dock. It's got some really decent speakers built in that'll allow you to hear those bouge sounds that Microsoft product launch trailers always have. There's another one of those dual Farfield Studio microphone arrays and a Teams button so that you can join and do stuff on your Teams calls. There's two USB-C ports, USB-A and HDMI, and even pass-through USB-C PD power charging. The Microsoft Audio Dock would be a clever upgrade for a desktop PC or an older laptop. For that matter, it'd be a smart docking solution for all of the current Surface products. I mean, the sheer size of the speakers in this dock mean that the sound that it could produce would always dominate anything that you could put inside of a laptop. And lastly, the surprise announcement that I don't think anybody saw coming was a Microsoft product to compete with our great Aussie success story, Canva. The Microsoft web-based designer tool looks like it might compete with Canva for the very occasional lightweight user like myself. It allows you to create quick and simple graphics that you can use in your PowerPoint presentations or in your social media posts. They're even building this capability into Microsoft Edge and Bing. Ah, oh, yeah, and I almost forgot to mention, but Microsoft seems to have hacked their way around Apple's walled garden to give captive people access to their photos from iCloud. It's definitely a nice addition to the Photos app in Windows, and I hope it gives those people mired in the Apple quicksand a lifeline to be able to use their photos where they need to and when they want to. If any of those products interest you, make sure that you hit subscribe, ring that notification bell so that you get notified when we release our videos on each one of these products in the near future.